You should eat breakfast, you know. It's the most important meal of the day. I'm not hungry. Morning. Morning, Paul. Morning, Maud. Do you want some toast? Um, I'm all right, thanks. I'm going to have to go. Did you see that? She's off with me again. I thought we'd sorted this whole mini thing out. It's your own fault. You should put your foot down, show her who's master of the house. Tell her you won't put up with being pushed around. Kurt, shut up. What you know about women could be written on the back of a stamp. What can I do? I I've told her nothing's going on, and I've said I won't even touch another kebab. I thought she was okay with me, but... She's not, is she? I've been looking for you. You know where I live? Well, you'd be happy with me calling round and across the tie rope, would you? No. I don't understand you, Molly. I really don't. What are you playing at? I'm not playing at anything. I never meant for any of it to happen. No, but it has. And the question is, what are you going to do about it now? Well, I don't have much choice now, do I? How you know. It's never easy, being married. It's never exactly how you think it's going to be, but it's worth working towards. It really is. Tyrone's a good man. So is Kevin. I thought we'd got it all sorted. She was fine about it last night. Then this morning, she more or less ignored me. Sure. It does sound much like Molly to me. And she's no reason to think that I'd do anything with Minnie. Or anyone come to that, she should know that she can trust me like I trust her. I'm sure she does trust you. She would have just been jealous. Because everyone says trust is the most important ingredient in a marriage, don't eh? I don't know. Yeah, but it is though, isn't it? I mean, come on. If they've not got trust, then what's the point? I just need to tell her that she's the only girl for me. Ty, seriously, I wouldn't worry about it. It's just one of those things which happen in a marriage. Molly knows you wouldn't cheat on her. You reckon? Yeah. Cheers. Do you know, it's times like this, I miss having Jack and Vera around. <laughs> Why? Because their marriage was uh, built on trust. No, for advice. Don't get me wrong, they listen to you. But they was married over 50 years, weren't they? They made it work. And that's what I want. I want to see Molly's face as she opens the present I bought her on our 50th. I just want us to be happy forever. Tyrone about? No, it's just nipped out. It's not lunch basket time already, is it? Oh, so you do think of your stomach as well as other parts of your anatomy then? What are you talking about? You're talking about you carrying on with my niece. That's right. She's told me everything. Look, I don't know what she said to Going you. Going to deny it to you? Taking advantage of a lass young enough to be your daughter? Hey, now, it's... Married to your best mate? How low can you get? I've not taken advantage of anyone, it's... Oh, so you're going to stand there and deny it here? Look me in the eye. Tell me Molly's lied to me. That you and her aren't really carrying on behind Tyrone and Sally's backs. No. Because you can't, can you? Barely out of her wedding dress and you've got your oily hands all over her. What's the matter? Wife not enough for you? Look, it's not like that. I love Molly. Don't. You're not talking to a slip of a girl now. I know fellas like you. I've married fellas like you. Wrong side of 40, stuck in a rut. Looking for a bit on the side to spice up their existence. Full of I love you. Taking advantage of young girls, ruining lives and always thinking of themselves as the victims. Okay, something like that. Stay away. You stay away from my Molly. Also help me. I shall bring your whole world toppling down on your smug, selfish head. Anything you want to tell me? Well, like... Like your auntie Pam! God, um, I had to tell her. You could have denied it! No, I couldn't. I couldn't. She saw us kissing. 
And anyway, why should I? I told her because I wanted to. It was a relief to tell someone. A relief? What are you talking about? You've blown everything. She won't tell Tyrone. I know she won't. She might. She could tell Sally. She's going out with me, Dad. Suppose she tells him. Will you stop shouting? I don't believe this. I really don't. People are going to find out sooner or later, aren't they? If you mean what you say you mean about loving me and wanting us to be together, people are going to find out. That's what this is about, isn't it? You told her because you want it out in the open. No, I'm just saying. I've not got to get back to the garage. Special occasion. Is it a birthday? No, that was the last time I bought chocolates. Only I ate most of them myself. This is more of a peace offering. Oh, well, go for soft centres, cos there's more sincerity in them than nuts and praline. Uh, look, if you don't mind me asking, how, how big an offence was this? Big. Although I've not actually done anything, it was just a misunderstanding. Ah. Well, what, what, what about this box? I mean, yeah, it, it is more expensive, but it, it does have a bow round it, is it? No, hang on, hang on. This misunderstanding, it didn't involve insulting her weight, did it? No. Not good. Because, I mean, you'd be barking up the wrong tree with chocolates if it did, as soft centres or not. <laughs> yeah, I'll take those ones, oh, That's 9 99 please. Oh, <laughs> did you know, a Ailey and Roy have gone to Romania for Frankie Baldwin's wedding. Where's Romania? Oh, it's one of those Dracula countries. Hey, Ailey will have to watch it, won't she? I mean, she's only just got used to being a woman. She doesn't want to turn into a vampire as well. Then he change. Right, see ya. Oh, bye. Oh, you, you, you wouldn't have got that, you see, but Hayley used to be a man. So it was quite an apt little joke about her turning into something else. <laughs> this banter like that helps things along. <laughs> Yeah, well, I can't stop. Tyrone's on a job. He's bought his chocolates. Why? Because he reckons you're mad at him over Minnie. Well, he knows I'm not. We talked it through yesterday. And apparently you've been off with him today. Yes, because I've been panicking about Auntie Pam. Good. You need to panic. I've told you she's not going to tell anyone. You know, the more I think about it, the more I think you told her on purpose because you want this out in the open. I don't know what I want. I didn't tell her because of that. I hate this. Meeting in secret. Lying to everyone. When we looked around that show home, you said you wanted that to be us. Us together, so what? Are you saying you didn't mean that? No, of course I did! Well, then I don't understand why you're shouting at me over telling Auntie Pam. If you want us to be together, we're going to have to tell people. Oh, right, OK. Go across there. Tyrone's got his head stuck in a VW polo. Go and tell him you're leaving him. Go on. You haven't a clue, have you? I hate this. When we're away from here and it's just us, I think it's all going to work out. We love each other and we can be together. And then we get back here and I'm stuck on this side of the street with Tyrone. You're over there with Sally. And it's like, what we had away from here doesn't even exist. I want to be with you, Kevin, all the time. Yeah, well, it's not that easy. It's not a game, Molly. It's a mess. A big mess. And people are going to get hurt. So just get real. to drag yourself out of bed. Any chance you might fall into some clothes today? What's the point? I'm not going anywhere. So this is how it's going to be, is it? You're just going to give up? Mum, I've rang the police. I've rang the solicitors. There is nothing I can do. Feel free to join in here, Kevin. Hey? Our daughter needs our help here. I told her he was only after the money. Would she listen? But it's not my fault. He ripped me off and left me skin. Listen, if you're worried about money, sell something. Oh, pick me out, why don't you? I was talking about your car. Uh, no way, I love that car. All right. What about that handbag you bought? What did that set you back? Two grand? No, three, actually. <sighs> anyway, I can't sell that. Why not? Uh, a few weeks ago, me and Minnie were in this club and I got nicked. What? I don't flame me, believe this. Yeah, well, I didn't want to tell you because I knew you'd react like this. Oh, what do you expect me to do? Pat you on the back and say, well done? 
I help it that he lied and cheated to me? All I ever did was trust him. We don't care about that, do you? What's wrong with you? It's not... F did, did you watch that thing on telly last night about the bloke that got struck by lightning four times? Nope. Well, it was about this bloke, right? And he got struck by lightning four times. I thought you said you didn't see it. I must have read about it somewhere. Well, anyway, I was watching it and I thought to myself, if I was you, mate, I'd be doing the lottery. Not with you. Because they're always saying, aren't they, you've more chance of being struck by lightning than you have of winning the lottery, right? Right. Right? Well, this bloke got struck four times. I mean, it's just maths, isn't it? OK, I've uh, got to nip to the shop and get some milk. OK. Can we talk? Not now. You all right? Yeah, just wondering what you want for your tea, babe. A white wine, please. Uh, nothing for me, then. Not me. Three straws, then. Right, are you going to tell me what this is all about? Oh, ask her. No, I'm asking you. Yeah, well, she betrayed me. Took my job, my own mother. Hey, if you wanted it so badly, Rosie, why didn't you say so? No, I don't want it. I don't want his stinking money. Right, that's uh, 3 30, please. I haven't got any money. Mm, yeah, I heard about that. No, I haven't got my purse with me. I don't know. Here. Thank you. I understand you're angry, but it's Luke you should be blaming for all this, not me or Tony. Yeah, and how do you think that makes him feel? That's what hurts. What? Well, I know you all think I'm stupid. But, you know, I really thought that he cared for me. How could he do this to me? Come on, don't get upset. It's not worth it. Look, everything's gonna turn out OK. Yes. That's blood, I hope it's Kevin's. You're lucky it's not yours. Hey. I just said what had to be said. Yeah, well, he wasn't too happy about it. Oh, well, I'm sorry if I hurt his feelings. But Kevin Webster's not really top of my list of concerns right now. So what do you want from me? I want to know when you're going to tell Tyrone what's been going on. Um, well, I was thinking of telling him over breakfast, but I didn't want to put him off his shreddies. This isn't just going to go away. Oh, well, don't you think I know that every time I see the two of them working together or I'm lay awake at night thinking, how did this happen and what am I going to do? So what are you going to do? It's my mess. I'll sort it out. You alone? Yep. Just you, me and the baked beans. Yeah. We need to talk. Uh-huh. I know. What are you doing? The world can do without bread and milk for 20 minutes. This is more important. Can you trust your auntie Pam not to say anything? Jenna, she's had four husbands. At least two of those, she was the one doing the plane away. And what does that mean? Runs in the family? Don't have a go at me. It means she can keep a secret. I hope so. You can't tell Tyrone. So what are we going to do? This changes everything. When it was just me and you, it was special. It felt... It feels different. So, um, <clears throat> Is this it, then? Is this the end? <sighs> I don't know. Well, do you want it to be? No. Do you? No. Can't carry on as we were. Not now that Pam knows. Thank you for stating the obvious. I was just talking out loud. It helps me think. Sorry I do that. I don't want to lose you, but, um, 
I can't bear the way Pam looks at me now. OK, well, tell her it's over. All right. Well, if we can convince Pam that we've seen sense and realised what we was doing was stupid and thank her for showing us what we was doing, if she thinks it's over, we stay clear of each other for a few weeks, then if we're really careful we can start seeing each other again. And what if, in that time, you decide it's all more trouble than it's worth? I could say the same to you. Well, I don't want to lose you. I need to be with you. And I will do anything I need to to make that possible. How long do you think it'll take? You know Pam better than me. I'll have to lie straight to her face. Well, I don't know about you, but I've got quite good at lying over the last few months. If I can do it to my daughters, my best mate, my wife. I'm sure you can do it to your auntie. Is there a plan B? Do you have one? Oh. Come here. 47 pence. It's 45 at fresh goes. Well, you know what you can do? I wish I'd never seen the two of you. I wish it could be wiped from my memory. The right, ignorance is bliss. It's too late now. The lad knows summer ain't right between you. It's over. You are? Me and Kevin, it's over. Kevin's finished it. Right. And how do you feel about that? I don't know. Stupid, angry, mostly stupid. I love Tyrone, I really do. I had a mad fling with a married man, but it's finished. And I know it's not going to be easy, but I'm going to work really hard to make things right. I'm not one to pass judgement, love, not with my history. But you're doing the right thing. I know grass always seems greener. But you and Tyrone, you've got something special. I know we do. Hey. Maybe if I'd been as wise as you, I'd have had a couple fewer husbands. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for making me see sense. You've had a lucky escape. I know. And are you sure it's over with Kevin? He's got kids. He thinks the whole thing was a terrible mistake. Well, had his fun and now he's gone back to wifey. It wasn't like that. Oh, face facts, love. That's exactly what it were like. You were stupid and naive, but him, you should have known better. Anyway, it's over. I reckon that's right. Because if my Uncle Joey did invent the white lines in the middle of the road, how come he's not in any of the history books? Well, it kind of begs the question how many history books have we got? Yeah, not many. I know. Well, we did it at school, and Mr. Olatay, who never mentioned him, and Mr. Olatay, who knew loads. Hey, up, look what the cat dragged in. Uh, all right. Uh, I'll get these. Uh, my left tire on, what's your poison? Hey, I'd rather have a drink than poison, please, Connor. Um, <laughs> we'll have a St. Clemens, because we've got to get back to work. You all right, Jack? Why, shouldn't have been. No, no reason. Oh, what's that? Uh, two St. Clemens, a pint of bitter, and half a lager, please. Right. Oh, and can I have uh, a dash of lemonade in lager? Ah, that's half a lager top. That's what it's called. Not quite a shandy. Oh, I have been in a pub before, you know. Right. That's ours, if you like. Have a bit of tea, we're having chicken Kievs. Well, I'm going to get back to work. No, and I've got to get back for my sister. She's lending me a Maeve Binche. I said I'd be home. You don't mind if I hang back a bit, do you? No, of course not. Right, I'll see you later then. OK, then, uh, bye. Mm. See ya. Uh, bye. Have you and her had a fallout? I'm fancy another one. Yeah? I'll see you later. Oh, bye. Right. Right, where's Jack? I thought you said he was here. Yeah, he's on his way. I just wanted to sort out what I was going to say before he gets here. About what? He wants to stop at ours tonight, says he needs some space. <laughs> <laughs> Only Jack could leg it from a mansion to a two-bedroomed house for space. Yeah, I know. All right, well, we'll put Kirk on the sofa. What, for tonight, yeah? Well, for as long as Jack wants the bed. Just keep crying.
about it, though, innit? He's even talking about moving out of Connie's permanently. But why have they fallen out? She's been hanging round outside his bedroom. I told you she was after him, didn't I? Um, you said she was after his money, which she's got in bucket loads. We'll tell Jack he can stop as long as he wants. He can move back in. The more, the merrier. Hi. She's banging on the door now. Well, where's Jack? Inside. What shall we do? The grown-ups just let them sort it out. Well, she's probably just lonely. Yeah, or some kind of sex fiend. You know, it's always the quiet ones that have these shady secrets. Oh, well, that's just nasty. I know you're in there, Jack Duckworth. I can hear you cowering. If this summit I've done, at least have the grace to tell me to my face. I'm not Gypsy Rose Lee. Got a bit of headache, Connie, and I was just on my way for a kit. Headlines would be nice. A couple of pointers. I saw you sneaking off down the drive. What's upset you? I'm, I'm, I'm not upset. No, 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 no. I'm not upset. Well, I am. Oh, you go and have a kip. I'll come back later. I'll not leave this, Jack. I want to know what I've done. Cheers, Kev. Cheers, Luke. I'm ready for this. Yeah, me too. Right. Oh, hey, Connie. You waiting for Jack? He shows his face. Is he still not made up? I don't know what I'm meant to have done wrong. Well, perhaps he can't settle at your house. It's like one of his pigeons, is Jack. Yeah, but... If he's pining for your house, sure I would have had an inkling. Happy as Larry one minute, then suddenly he's up and off without a word of explanation. I hope you make up soon. Well, I'm not begging for him to come back to my place. He can do as he pleases. All right, Jack. What are you having? Uh, right, we'll leave you two to it. What do you fancy? An explanation. A large one, with ice and lemon. I reckon it's going. Don't look. No, I'm looking. I'm just glancing in their general direction. And? Don't look good. Tyrone says you're homesick. Tyrone knows nothing. Well, you must be sick about Summit. You're a wonderful woman, Connie. A wonderful woman and a dear friend. Oh, Egg. Don't like the sound of that. You know, I never thought I'd laugh again after our Vera. Not properly. But you put the smile back on my face. Spit it out, Jack. I can't give you what you want. Is this about you not putting the toilet seat up? No. I know I've nagged you about it, but just forget it. I like your nagging. I like your cooking, your, your sense of humour, everything about you, but... I just can't take it to the next level. Level, what are you on about? Don't make me spell it out. Well, you'd have to, Jack. Otherwise, you and me are going to fall out big time. I don't have them kind of feelings for you, Connie. I wouldn't have them for anybody. But no me for you. What put an idea like that into your head? If I give you a little wink when I'm dishing out your tea, it's not code for get upstairs now. You know what you've done, Connie. No, I don't. Oh, maybe I've got the wrong end of the state. My mistake. I'm sorry. Let's, let's change the subject. Eh? Not until you tell me what I've done. Straight with folks, and that's what I like about you. It's a delicate matter, and I've already offended you. I've heard you outside my bedroom door, middle at night. No, you haven't. No, that's impossible. Oh, no. What? It hasn't happened for a while. I thought it had stopped for good. What? The sleepwalking. I'm like Alfred Wainwright when I start. I've even ended up in neighbours' gardens. You were asleep. <laughs> and you thought I were being fresh. It did happen more than once. <laughs> Hey, if it happens again, open the door, give me a shake and send me back, will you? <laughs>
That is if you're coming back home. I can't wait. <laughs> hey, we'll have to tell Molly and Tyrone the news. They've been here again for the last ten minutes. <laughs> they're like a couple of kids. No, they're not a couple. Not a real couple, anyway. That's what Jack says, and I believe him. Yes, all right, let's not open that oil tanker of worms again, eh? Do you want another? Yes, please. Um, should we ask Kevin and Sally to join us? Looks like they're having a heated debate. Will you just listen to me for one minute? It sounds to me as though you've just given up. You've just accepted that John Stape is going to live across the street. It's what they told Rosie. You mean she's mouthing off and he's trying to get a word in? Yeah, he loves it, though. Or being hampered. Hey, they've been married 20-odd years, then. Kevin and Sal are devoted to each other. Get over. <laughs> no, they've been separated and had affairs. But they've always ended up back together. Is that the secret of a successful marriage? <laughs> no, don't say that. Just saying, you know, all the other women that he's been with, at the end of the day, obviously meant nothing. How many of the women have there been? Well, there was Natalie Oryx. She was the bigger. Then there was Alison, although I think he was with Alison when him and Salad split up. And then there was Molly. Molly? Hmm. The nurse. Dropped her like a shot, though, when Sal clicked her fingers. Got no right letting him come back here. They should send him off to some grotty council estate. Oh, like the one you was brought up on. Mm. Anywhere, as long as it's not opposite us. I mean, we must be able to appeal, Kevin. We're the victims. Well, actually, Rosie is. Well, if she can accept it. Yeah, well, she's just bottling it all up, putting on a brave face. Rosa, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. See? Now, you haven't forgotten that they're releasing John State today? No. Well, you must be a bit upset about it. Well, it's like I said, I'm a victim liaison officer. I've just got more important things to think about, like money. Right, Dad, please, can I borrow 20 quid? No. But I am totally skin. So get a job. Well, how can I get down to the job centre if I've got no money? I could push a car. I better still sell it. That car is the only thing that I have left. No way I'm a selling it. Dad. Right, fine, I'll go and ask Minnie. Just, I don't believe it! Am I the only one who cares about this? Well, it looks like it. I don't like it any more than you do, but there's nothing we can do about it. Rosie's managed to put it behind her. Maybe we should try and do the same. Yeah, well, how can we when he's living opposite? He's got no right, no flaming right! Right, I'll see you later. Yeah, OK. All right, babe. Comes to something when you've even got to hide under a car to avoid seeing me. I wasn't hiding from you, Mal. Didn't, didn't know you was there. It's a joke. You're not smiling. Not much to smile about these days. Oh, well, you can say that again. The state's being released today. Sal's going around, acting like a rabid dog. Have I put down, then? Are you annoyed at me? How can I be annoyed with a total stranger? But we agreed to play it cool for a bit. Your idea, I think. Yeah. Morning. Uh, Morning. So I just get us some walkie-talkies, then we don't have to be seen together at all. I'm just trying to be careful. I'll save you the bother. Hey, you, in here now. Yes, OK, it was my idea, but you agreed. We don't want Pam knowing we're still seeing each other. <laughs> but we're not, are we? Which is maybe why you suggested it. Hey? According to Tyrone, you always go back to Sally in the end anyway. What do you want about? Oh, let's see. There was, um, Natalie. Then Alison. I believe there was even a Molly. What, do you collect them? What has stuff what happened years ago got to do with us now? I just didn't realise I was on a list. Who's next? <laughs> there's no next. There's only you I want. But there's no way I want us to finish, Molly. I love you, and I mean, I'd do anything for you. Apart from leave your wife. Close me up, I forgot. Now, 
of us. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Right. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Oh. Oh. New bow. No, no, just a friend. Male or female? Never knew you mind. Signy sign yet? What? John Stable, of course. I don't know. I've been stuck under his bonnet all day. What do you want for your tea? Uh... Oh! Right, hang on a minute. What? Let's do this right. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh! Set foot in that house, you pervert! You've got no right coming back here. Just turn around and go away again. I'll just leave it. No, I won't leave it. Look, um, I didn't do this lightly. I sent letters and gave people the chance to say... Yeah, well, they might be too spineless to speak up, but I'm not. We don't want you here, weirdo. Or you, for that matter. Feel free to abuse me all you like, but leave Fizz out of it. I will not. She's the one who brought you here. So desperate for a fellow that you have to con through the dregs, you're pathetic. Leave her alone. Oh, it's all right, Chess. No, it's not. Lots of the neighbours want them around here. In fact, a lot of them helped redecorate the house for them. So there. Well, then, folk round here have got short memories. Have you forgotten what he did to my daughter? He wooed you all with his fancy words, did he? Made you think he was a gentleman? Well, he's not. He's a sick pervert who happens to use a dictionary. Try looking up the word paedophile. Oh, OK, let's go in. I've not finished with you oh, yet. Oh, yes, you have. <laughs> nope, you sir. are not going to get away with hey. this. So. I won't let this rest. You hear me? So. You're showing yourself up now. Come on, get on. Carson spoke up in support, not even Gail. It's times like this you know who your friends are. John Tate must be well pleased. Well, can you not just leave it, eh? If I hear you say that one more time... Your dad's right, Mum. Why don't you just shut up about it? I'm doing this for you. Yeah, well, I don't want you to. John Tate this, John Tate that. I'm sick of hearing his name. See, I told you she was upset. Yeah, at you. Can you not just let it go and move on? Yeah, when he does. Oh, I've got a pub. Oh, well, thank you for your support. That's right, Mum. It doesn't do any good being a victor. Do without a sermon from you. All right. All right. All right. Ooh. You stood in the deck? Nothing. Who come to bed? Yeah, in a bit. Full English and don't spare the horses. I beg your pardon, what did your last slave die of? Oh, come on. I've been living off slops and gruel. Anyway, you promised that you'd spoil me. Eh, uh, you've been spoiled plenty already. Pretty please. By the way, last night was incredible. Eh, uh, save the soft soap. I'm doing your brekkie. I'm serious. You weren't so bad yourself. Did you know the best bit? Mm, I can think of a few contenders. Falling asleep. Oh, charming! And knowing that I'd be waking up with you beside me. <laughs> For that, you get a fried slice. Neck. 
Is that black paint? Looks like emulsion. Does it matter? Ah, oh, who do you think did it? I reckon I've got a pretty good idea. And that was quick. And changed your mind about your grapefruit. Couldn't leave well enough alone, could you? I'm sorry. What's going on, Dad? Some comedians decided to give Fizzy's house a new paint job. <laughs> this I have got to see. When did you do it? I said it were me. Don't even think about denying it. Late enough not <sighs> to get caught, OK. Now, I'd appreciate it if you lost that tone. Was it you? Mum, you were so naughty. Mum, that is vandalism. Don't be so dramatic. Yeah, go and save an orphan or something. Sophie's right. It's criminal damage. Well, criminal implies a victim, and the only victim here is your daughter. Yeah, well, tell that to the judge. <laughs> Listen to him. It won't come to that. Anyway, nobody can prove anything. Unless you confess. Oh, give me some credit. Since when have you ever been able to resist bragging? Yeah, that's got a point, Mum. Fine, well, it'll be our little secret. And you can wipe that look off your face. I expected more from you, Mum. Well, when you're praying for my immortal soul, remember, an eye for an eye. Proud of yourselves, are we? Eh? Enjoy your late night fun and games. I don't know what you're on about. Oh, don't come the innocent Kevin. I know exactly how Sally's vindictive little mind works. Well, you know more than me. Right, fine. Have it your way. Let's see what the police have to say. Do what you want. But if I was to send John a message, would it be paint smeared over that window? Is that a threat? No, it's a fact. So do what you want, Fizz, but trust me, my life's complicated enough without adding him to the mix. Smashing job. I hardly recognise the place. Every cloud has a silver lining, eh? Every black cloud, you mean? Oh, yeah. Doing a bit of DIY. Let's go inside. Odd way to spend your honeymoon. I'm surprised you're not locked away in that bedroom of yours. If only. Unfortunately, we had a spot of trouble last night. Oh, I'm very sorry to hear that. Yes, yeah, someone thought it'd be amusing to vandalise our house. Hmm. That explains the paint work, then. Yeah, we thought you'd gone gone. I mean, what sort of person does something like that, eh? You'd have to be a pretty disturbed and sick individual. Maybe they were angry. No. Just pathetic. Oh, no. You OK, Sal? You lost for words? No. Just rather let my artwork do the talking. Oh, Sally. OK. He doesn't deserve to breathe the same air as us, much less have a view. If it bothers you that much, feel free to move. Over my dead body. Told you. Hey, yeah, Kev. Yes. Looked like you needed that. Uh, just a tad. Bad day. Par for me at the moment. made to feel like I'm the villain in all this. Well, part of a want a quiet pipe by myself, do you not understand? Someone has to make a stand. Yeah, and of course it had to be you. What's that supposed to mean? You want this fight. I want justice. Yeah, well, this isn't the answer. So what do we do? Just stick our heads in the sand? No, we get a solicitor. Do everything legal and above board. No, we have to pay to get rid of him. I'm sorry, but I don't think so. I'm not asking. I've had enough, Sal. You pull another stunt like this. And I'll call the police myself and I mean it. This is not to have to look at the bloke who terrorised her day in, day out. Oh, not that again. Yeah, I'll have coffee, please, Dad. You went about things all the wrong way, Sal. I should have cared about my family. I used to think you did too. Well, what do you want me to do? Smash his face in again? End up inside? It's not how you get justice. I learned that the hard way. I'm not apologising for what I did. I'd do a sight worse to protect my kids. You're doing it for you, so not Rosie, to make yourself feel better. That is not true. State needs to see he's not wanted round here. Oh, I'm sick of hearing his name. Yeah, and that's what he's banking on wearing folk down and he's succeeding. His life should be a misery, but our so-called friends are rolling out the red carpet and you'd rather look the other way. I'm not looking the other way. I'll fix a meeting with a solicitor and see where we stand. I know where I stand. You, I can't fathom. Molly, your toast burning. Oh, what? Then by night was last week, love. <laughs> nice one, mate. Who turned the dial up? 
I'm sorry, I had a crumpet when I got back from the pub last night. I'm glad somebody had some. Why didn't you just turn the dial back down? I didn't think. Well, it goes without flaming saying, doesn't it? Honestly, a thought couldn't survive a split second in your head. Now it can live in a vacuum, can it? I don't know so much. I sucked up a spider the other week, but by the time he emptied the bag, he was still alive. Oh, give me strength. I'll make you some fresh. No, no, don't bother. I'm going to go to work. Don't take it to heart, mate. It's all right. I reckon it's best I move on. I feel in the way here. You're not the only one. Might just be another notch on the bedpost to you, but this... You are nothing of the kind. Look, I'm seeing a solicitor later over this state business. Once I'm done with him, I can go straight to the motel. I'll be waiting. Look, you can't just sit on paperwork. I didn't have last year's invoice to answer, so I've ended up quoting him less. Well, it's not my fault if you can't price a job properly. Right, just close, so I had to go to... Look, I've done my best with the books, but if they're not good enough, you know where you can stick them. Speak to Kevin like that. Same goes for you. Mo, what's it? Yeah. Kevin, you need to have a word with Tyron. I could have been a customer. No, oh, I flew off the handle with her. It's, it's all this state business. It's winding me up. Yeah, me and all. He stood out there, bald as brass. I can't bear it. I won't. Don't we hold your horses? I'm seeing a solicitor this afternoon. Well, maybe I could come with you. No, I can manage that on my own. I don't need you wasting Chrissy's time with your ranting. It might be a mate, but he still charges by the hour. Yeah, I suppose so. Will you be on for your tea? Uh, I thought I could go for a quick one after. I'll get some chips on the way back. Oh. Hey, are you sure you're all right? I'm fine, I told you. Honestly, it's something announced. Get yourself back to work. All right, well, I'll see you tonight, then. Yeah, all right, I've got a nip out later. What, to see your dad? Yeah, and then I'm meeting a mate in town. All right. Who are you seeing? Does it matter? I was just taking an interest. OK. Her name's Eleanor Potter. I've not seen her since school. She saw me on Facebook, suggested we meet up. I'm only going to be polite. I don't have that problem. My class has a reunion every mealtime in strange ways. <laughs> so what was she like, then? Why don't you go yourself? Are you so flaming intrigued? Take Kirk with you. I might get a bit of peace and quiet. I don't know what's the matter with you. Nothing I say is right lately. And the way he spoke to Kurt this morning. He's moving out and I don't blame him. I apologise. I didn't mean to jump down your throat or Kirk's. I'm just worried about my dad, that's all. He should have been better by now. I'm sorry. I just think everything revolves around me, don't I? No, you don't. It's not your fault. Yeah, it is. You being happy is all that matters to me. And if you're not, then it means I'm not doing my job properly. So, there's nothing you can do. Not unless he does anything precipitous, Kev. What a world. Yeah, the law's an ass. You should say it above the door. Well, cheers for finding time anyway. Don't be daft. Family well? Well, uh, yeah, yeah. Look, uh, while I'm here, can I ask something off the record? There is no record. I know it's going to sound like uh, that old chestnut, but I have got a mate who's knocking off his business partner's wife. Wow. What an idiot. I know, total lunatic. I've told him he's dicing with death. Anyway, if he did leave his wife to shack up with this other piece, what would he have to do legally? Well, he may have to sell the family home and give Sally, I mean his wife, half the share of his business. It'll be messy, put it that way. Make me and Debbie look amicable. Well, cheers, Chris. I'll uh, let him know. Yeah, you do that. And don't recommend me. Hey. Right. Sorry, I'm late. You're not still in the mood at me, are you? Oh, for crying out loud, this is worse than being married. Thank you. Well, you still got your face on at me, cos Tyrone mentioned I had an affair a few years ago. I wasn't married to you back then, Molly. I'm not married to you now. I just want to know about it. It's important we're honest with each other. Oh, yeah, cos honest is important in affairs. In relationships, it is. So go on. Tell me everything. 
How did you meet her? What did she look like? Where did it all go wrong? So what are you doing now? Oh, I've got to go back. Report to Sally what Chris said. Who's Chris, the solicitor? Yeah, not that it was particularly productive. Stape can come and go as he wants. The law's an ass. In fact, he should put that on a sign above that solicitor's door. <laughs> Imagine going back to that show home now, eh? Imagine if that was ours. Yeah. Kev? He said what? Very unlikely. John Stape is walking around under our noses and we can't get an injunction. I'm not telling you what Chris told me. And even now he's working in the cafe. Yeah, well, I didn't know that at the time, did I? I think we ought to get him the solicitor. I went off Chris when he split up with Debbie because she were lovely. I mean, as he looked at this from every angle. Look, he only saw me as a favour to a mate's cell. I can't afford to go paying solicitors left, right and centre. After all the breakdowns you've been doing, where's the money going? National purse. Mm, I hope Molly isn't fiddling with things. Do you know, I think I ought to take charge of those books again. Anyway, he's better. I still can't get my head round it. To think I've been working for a murderer. Oh, no, that is their creeper. Oh, I told you there was a bad one from the start. Would you listen? No, it was all Mr. Garden this, Mr. Garden well, that. Well, I wasn't the only one who was fooled. Can't believe he went after poor Roy as well. Yeah, well, you know what's really scary? How close I was to death in that hotel room with him. Oh, damn. You don't think... What? You know that video that I showed him of um, Carla kissing Liam? You don't think that's what drove him to it, do you? Uh, you can't go thinking like that. Might have been a spark, you know, but normal blokes, they don't go around killing folk, don't matter what they've done. Well, yeah, true. <laughs> Might have known you couldn't feel guilty for over a second. Hey, don't go blaming her. Yeah, well, she's just Subject said... Subject closed. They got him for it, that's all that matters. Yeah, your dad's right. So, I wonder what will happen to the factory? Mm, God knows. I suppose I'll have to take over for now till they get something sorted. Well, you know, if they do get a new boss, then will you put a good word in for me? Of course I will. Say she's got a great CV. She can cross her legs in slow motion, she can pout over the telephone. Oh, and she can record videos on a mobile. Well, shut up, you dirt brain. Right, I'm off, Kev. Now, have you got the books back off Molly yet? Because I haven't seen them for ages. Uh, no. Right, well, ask her for them, will you? Or I will if I see her first. Mm. Bye-bye, love. Are you want me? No, I'm just giving the books back to Kev. All right. Mm. Nice. See you later. Bye. It's not so urgent. The books for anyway. I don't want Sally wants them, but I don't want her to find them. Why not? Because she might figure out I've not been doing all those extra breakdowns. And I've uh, started putting the motel expenses through the books. You idiot, since when I've noticed. Yeah, well, I'm not that daft, am I? They're not down as that. The down of sundry expenses. Oh, is that what I am? Thought some of them were a bit big. See, you notice Sally's bound to grill me on them. This will just buy me a bit of extra time to think of some excuses. Right. So you um weren't prepared to cough up the money yourself? Hey, he mounts up, you know. Might as well claim a bit back. Oh, dead romantic. We still on for this afternoon, or will I be putting you out of pocket? Yes, of course we are. Because you are worth every penny. Has Molly still got the books? No, she brought them back this morning. Right, well, can you fetch them for me? Yeah, sure. Um, can't seem to find them. It's no wonder. I mean, look at the state of this place. Well, it is a garage. Yeah, well, it's no excuse for untidiness. I mean, if you could both put things back where you found them. Oh, see, point proven. Well, I don't know how they got that. Goodness knows. I can see I'm going to have to turn my hand to more than just the books. Wow. You got on that calculator, Sal. So was you good at maths in school, then? It just doesn't add up. What, with the figures and that? According to this, your profits are down. Well, there is a credit crunch on that. I know that, Tyrone. I'm not daft, but... But what? Well, I just thought it would be rosier. 
What with all the call-outs that Kev's been doing. And there's lots of expenses that have been entered wrong and I couldn't for the life of me tell you what they were for. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, just get this. Oh. Sally. Hold on. Who's this? It's Sally. What does she want? What does she want? Why is she phoning both of us? Maybe there's a problem with Tyrone. Oh, let's hope it's just that. Oh, just! Just! You listen to yourself. What? That's a phone message. Right, go on then. Put it on speakerphone. Face the music. You're late. Right. Where the hell have you been? been? Trying to get hold of you all day. It's like trying to raise the dead. Didn't you have your mobile on? What's the matter? Why didn't you answer your phone? I heard it on silent. I must have nudged the wrong button. Sally. Kevin, I've been going out of my mind sat here. Just... Just tell me whatever it is I'll explain. I'm... I'm sorry about it's my mobile. such a mess. How could you? I mean, how could you let those books get in such a state? The whole garage looks like a bomb's hit it. Molly's useless. She's worse than useless. She should not have let those books get in that state. Right, yeah. I mean, everything's entered wrong. I can't make sight and the sound of all them breakdowns you're meant to have done. And there's a lot of entries called sundries. What the hell are these sundries? <laughs> I don't know. <sighs> you're going to have to have a word with her. Nothing adds up. Yep, yeah, I will do. She's right piece of work. I'll, uh, I'll talk to her. She can't cut it, Kevin, so bin her. I'll have a word with her after work. No, I'll talk to her. I'll do it. I'm not letting her loose on those books again. She's clearly a dimwit. Is there any point in us even going in today? Oh, come on, let's just have a cuppa and see what's happened. Oh. What's up? Forgot to lock the door last night, Webster. If we'd have been cleared out, police would think it were an inside job. I'm not doing a stroke of work until I know what's happening. Can Tony appoint a manager while he's in jail? Well, I'd be happy to keep things ticking over. I think hey, I you know what you lot need? Fairy godmother. Time for another cup of before work. What? Tea. Do you want another? No, oh, I've got to get to work. That's why I said before you go. But what have I done now? Nothing, sorry, I just didn't sleep. No, you were tossing and turning all night. No more coffee for me of an evening. Any news on Maria? Oh, she's in a right state, Kurt reckons. I always knew her and Tony weren't right together. How do you mean? Because people should stick to their own kind, shouldn't they? Tony is older, rich and into all that fancy stuff. Maria's one of us, down to earth. That's why we work, babe. We belong together. Right, I best get to work. See ya. Do you reckon she's back to sell up again, then? Who buy half of this place when your partner's a murdering cycle? So, we're stuck with you. Oh, it's just like old times, isn't it? Sally? Why are you standing there trying to look important? Do you know, we didn't have anybody in charge, so I've been running things. Well, you can get back to your machine now. 
Are you going to uh, let us know what you've been up to? Oh, we've not got time to waste chatting. But we have a right to know what's going on, surely. OK. Since Mr Gordon's unlikely to be joining us any time soon... So we did murder Liam, then? Oh, they're going to throw the key away. What happened to innocent to prove guilty? Please, this is Mrs Gordon's husband we're talking about here. Sorry, Carla, I have been trying to keep gossip to a minimum. Oh, stop crawling, Webster. You're going to wear your knees out. All right. Whoever's been in charge, they're not anymore. I am. So whoever wants to gossip, speculate or whinge can either do it in their own time or at the job centre. Does anyone want to say anything? Good. So glad we understand each other. Um, Carla, I'd be very happy to bring you up to speed on things, you know, the work that I've been doing and the orders and so on. Not right now, Sally, thank you. Well, it's just that there's been some... Actually, you know, there is something you can do for us. Oh. Nip to the cafe, get us a decent cup of coffee, will you? Morning. Hiya. You seen out Steve? No, sorry. It's vanished. I thought it was in the shower. Went in, scrub his back. Gone. So can I get you anything? Mmm, this chocolate. And uh, some bread. It's on the shelf. Now then. White or brown, white or brown. Should be brown, but a bacon sunny on brown is just wrong. I'll tell you white then. Mm, I'll have one of each. He ain't working. Check the cab office. Lloyd well, haven't seen him neither. Maybe he's buying you a Christmas present. Maybe. Hey, I never thought of that. My first Christmas as a married woman. Weird. Oh, you and all, isn't it, Mal? Mm hmm Hey, what are you going to buy, Tyrone? Oh, no idea. No, no. Not keeping you awake now, Kev? Oh, I'm so sorry. I do hate it when people do this. <laughs> I dread getting in a queue behind Blanche. She just goes on and on and on and on and... I'm doing it again, uh, Sorry. Bye. <laughs> ah, my bread. Expecting your ambassador with a tin of dog food if she didn't shut up. Never mind her. What's going on with Sally? The books. The books? I thought you'd hidden them from her. Yeah, well, she's found them and she's noticed those call outs are not showing up. You know, Is the that ones. It? Why didn't you tell me? I've been worried sick. I'm sorry, but. I've been laid awake half the night waiting for it to come hammering on the door. Or flashing blue lights outside yours when the ambulance arrives. Well, it's not me she's after. She wants to give you a rollicking, messing up the accounts. Brilliant. Ooh, job centre? No, traffic centre. I thought you were skint. Well, window shopping costs nothing, Dad. Hi, Molly. Hi. Toodles. Just let Sally have a moan and forget about it. It's what I do. Hiya, Sal. Did you want to see me? Do you know, this might actually be your lucky day. Oh? Yeah, I've got other fish to fry, as they say. She's been bailing Carla out of the factory. Right. Well done. Been trying to intimidate me, but I'm not having any of it. And then she needed my help. Right, these accounts. There's discrepancies, anomalies, there's non-existent charges. Well, I think some of that might be my fault. What do you mean? Well, cash. I don't put everything through the books. Oh, well, <sighs> Sally's right. It's important that they're done properly. She does it so much better than me. Yeah, well, I have had a lot of experience. Oh, excuse me. Hello? Oh, hi, Carla. An hour? When? No, of course, no, it's not a problem, no. I'll, uh, I'll be with you in five minutes. Ciao. Carla needs me at the factory. Just go and get changed. Why? I've been chopping onions for our tea. I can't go into a meeting reeking of food. All right, well, I'll go through these books with Molly. Show her where she went wrong. Yeah, I don't know how long I'm going to be. Maybe me and Carla will go for a catch-up in the Rovers after. Now, Sophie's staying at Sham, so just get yourself some tea. Yeah, no problem. See you later. Bye. Yeah. So, house to ourselves. So? Did you know from the window upstairs, you can see right into the brewery's yard? Oh. It's fascinating. And when the trees are bare, you can see all the lights on the bypass. 
Ooh. And if someone come in and we was down here. And if we were upstairs. Then you went to the toilet and I've got to get changed. I don't know. I don't think it's right. If we did that. Oh, but danger adds to the fun, doesn't it? Oh, I thought there was no danger. Well, there's not, but you know. I best get back. Tyrone will be wondering. She did it just to humiliate me, Kevin! I hate her! Mark, have you got any more bread? Could you not have all that yourself? Do you want another bread? No, you're all right, love. I just popped in to say hello. Um, right, yes, yeah, I'm just rushed off my feet at the minute. I should have been at work five minutes ago. I promised him a fry up and I've got to make his sandwiches yet. Well, look, why don't I take them round to him later? On the house, eh? I'm and pickle, do you? Oh, great, yeah. Yeah, you sure? Yeah, go on, you get off to work. I'll sit with this one and keep him company. Right, thank you. Oh. Kurt's coming for his tea, so bring us back something nice. Oh, right. Is there anything else you'd like me to do before I go and do a full day's work? Yeah, see you later. See you. Sarah, all love. Oh, Molly seems to have a lot on the plate. Yeah, she likes to keep busy. <sighs> Maybe she could do with a break, though, eh? A night off. Hey, you could take it to pictures or a meal out, maybe. But we don't like eating out. And it's cheaper to eat in, isn't it? Molly's a good cook, and we don't have to dress up, do we? Well, how about a quiet night in, then, eh? Fancy bottle of wine, watch a film, make her feel special. She's hardly ever in, anyway. And we always row about movies, because I like horrors and she likes romances. Hey, can I have some cheese on that ham and pickle? Yeah. Jules hasn't got any. I'll go over to Wivenshaw. Yeah, we'll don't rush. It's not like we've got a fleet of motors lined up. Right, yeah. See you in about an hour. You need to tell him to make more of an effort. We should need telling. Oh, he's a fella they all need telling. <laughs> You're going to spend the rest of your lives together. Get him trained now. Oh, it's no big deal. Well, obviously it is. Or are you saying you don't care how he treats you? No, of course not, but I knew what he was like when I married him. Oh, did you also know that you'd be sleeping with his best mate as well? But aren't you going to answer that? It'll stop in a minute, look. I know you mean well, and I know you're worried in case I take up with Kevin again. Yeah, I'm more worried that you haven't finished with him in the first place. I've said I have, haven't I? Well, according to Tyrone, you're never home. Well, he sits in front of the telly every night. If the Queen popped round for a cup or he wouldn't notice her. Look, just let me deal with my marriage my way, OK? I only want what's best for you, love. You deserve a husband who worships you. Who wants to spend every minute of every waking day with you? Right, well, I'd best be off. Get these delivered. See you, love. Bye. Ta-ra. You rang? I've got half an hour. And Tyrone won't be back for an hour. Don't be uncomfortable about being here. This is my house, and I want you here. And I want you in my bed. Well, I want to be in your bed. Yeah. Stop moaning at what? Well, I just thought, I mean, all this day for a book, there's no point in us going back. Huh? Well, fine, we just get your book then so we can go back. Mm, it could be anywhere. Probably upstairs. We're back to the street in half an hour. She's gone. Wait there. Where are you going? Found it. Where 
せえ見せえはい。Wishing something had happened where we have to tell. We wouldn't have any choice then. Anyway, it wasn't Sally who came in. Yeah, we wouldn't have wanted Sophie and her mate to walk in, would we? <laughs> we would not. Come on, check the coast is clear. Of course, everybody's. Oh, hello, Hayley. Nice to have you back. You're only saying it because she's the manager. You should just walk out, Mum. No, I have thought about it. You should try walking back in and ask Carla to take you back home. Yeah, and I did. I can tell you this, I'm not asking her again. She told you to get lost, didn't she? Yeah, what's it going to do with you? Uh, OK, OK. I'm going to have this every day from now till Christmas. Oh, I hope so. Yeah, a typical Christian who doesn't care about anybody else. Oh, we care about people, just not you. You know, Kevin, it would be nice to get some support from you when I come back from the factory and tell you that I've been demoted for no reason. And what would you like me to say? Well, I'd like you to say they should have let you keep your job and not give it to Hayley. Oh, like this one. All seated on the ground. You know, they should let you keep your job and not give it to Hayley. Well, it's a bit like now. Came down and glory shone Does shut up? around. Come in, sit yourself down, mate. Cheers. Hey, Kirky. Hi, Molly. You all right? So, um, Maria's gone off to Ireland, has she? Yeah, and taken little baby Liam with her. Oh, so you're all on your own? Which is why I invited him round. Well, not really on my own. I've always got Ozzy to talk to. Why didn't you say you could have come tomorrow? I'll come tomorrow as well. Do you want a drink? Yeah, go on. Right, we have a big selection of beer, beer and beer. I'll have a beer. Cheers, Bob. Good choice. Cheers, mate. Good choice. Right, so does anyone want a cup of tea, a cup of coffee? I'll have a tea, thanks. Coffee for me, please. And then I'm going to wipe you off the face of the earth? No chance. I've been psyching myself up for this. <laughs> right, I thought we'd start with Street Fighter 4. Anything you like. I've been sharpening my reflexes, catching baby Liam's dummy when he spits it out. Oh, we're out of milk. I'm just going to pop to the shop to get some. Oh, well, not if it's just for me. No, it's all right. I've got to get some for tomorrow anyway. Right, let's get this set up then, because the sooner we start, the sooner you're going to get absolutely... Annihilated. I just didn't want you wondering what on earth was going on. Well, we would have guessed, but it's nice of you to let us know. And you don't mind? No, no, I love Christmas music, me. You could play it day and night and you wouldn't have me complaining. Oh, well, that's good then. <sighs> OK, well... See you then. Yep. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Anna. Bye. She's just saying she likes Christmas music. What was she was saying earlier? Yeah. What's your mother for, yeah? I suppose it was nice of them to give us some warning. Well, what we'd say if we said no, we don't want it, I don't know. So, uh, the big switch on us now, is it? Well, it sounded like it. Well, I might have a wandered out there, have a look, see what sort of treats we're in for this oh. year. I've been thinking about what you said. Me too. You know what I mean, then? And I said I half wish Sally had caught us. I mean, if we're saying it and we mean it... Why don't we do something about it? I think we should. Um... Well, 
You're the one with the family to lose. <sighs> the girls are nearly grown up. Well, I've lost them anyway, so... Look, I know they'll be knocked sideways, but we can't please everyone, can we? Um. Well, we can if we keep things as they are. It's not on though, that, is it? I mean, I suppose what I'm trying to say is... Will you, Molly Dobbs, leave Tyrone and start a new life with me? Yeah. I will. You've gone and bought that El Cheapo coffee again. Oh, stick some sugar in it. It'll be fine. We should just get a coffee machine. You can make macchiato and um, latte and everything. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. When you start giving me some housekeeping, I'll think about it. First thing you want to do is sell that daft car of yours. Dad, how many times have I told you I love that car? Yeah, you can't blame her. It is fabulous. Exactly. Get shut. You're 18. You should be paying your way. Right, yes, and I will. Yeah, well, you can't expect us to keep bailing you out forever. You know, there might be other things me and your mum want to spend our money on. Oh, yeah, too right. Oh, Kevin, we couldn't get a pagoda, could we? I've always wanted a pagoda. Oh, I've got an idea. I could buy Rose's car and I could use that as my little runaround. You're as bad as he is. Do you know, I have got a good mind to divorce you. <laughs> hey? I told you yesterday that we'd run out of cornflakes. I had to have a scabby bit of dry toast this morning for breakfast. Oh, I'm sorry. And now I've got no overalls because these have got chuddy stuck to the backside. I'm a rubbish wife, aren't I? <laughs> Blimey, what's up with you? You normally tell me where to go when I have a moan. Sometimes think you are borderline feminist. <laughs> Come on, you're a smashing wife. I couldn't ask for any better. Thank you. <laughs> Who's texting you at this hour anyway? Oh, it's just Dev reminding me I'm in early. I'm gonna have to do something with this. It could come off on a car seat or anything. Put a plaster on it. Yes. You are brilliant. How are you getting on? Only uh, Mr. Taylor needs this back by his other. Yeah, I'm nearly done. I'll tell you what, I'll finish off here. You and Nick Trudeau's get a couple of bacon butties. Oh, top boss in the area. Yes, I could kill for a bacon butter. So did you mean what you said last night? Because I meant every word. We can't talk now. I know it's big, both of us leaving our lives, but I'd do it. For you, I'd do it. Someone might see us. Can you get away later? They'll try. Usual place, six o'clock. Then we can talk properly. I'm worried sick. I thought you weren't coming. I couldn't stay away from you. My life depended upon it. I've, um, I've told Tyrone I've seen a mate from school and said it might be a late one. He doesn't suspect a thing. I'll try not to feel bad about it, cos all that'll be over soon once we make the break. So you mean it, then? About us setting up together? Yeah, of course I mean it. Before yesterday, it would have been the worst thing in the world, Sally finding out, but how? Bring it on. Honest. You really mean it? Yes, of course I do. 